since 2017 we've been looking at um the transition from ethereum uh i think i look at it a lot more uh, i would call on kind of almost a macro level so we look at just the inertia from the space and gpu mining in general and see that not saying that something's going to fulfill in that that gap when ethereum eventually does go away but i think there's enough interest in the space and there's a lot of interest in development so i look at it also from what are the developers of some of these other chains trying to bring to the table are they bringing any other innovation that maybe was not accepted in some of the major primary chains and does that help that layer one proof of work coin uh, find a spot in the world it's a big world there's not a lot of people that are that you know prospectively mine right now but as that conversation with like bitcoin critical infrastructure you see proof of work you see the importance of the infrastructure level and then you see also these other networks that are providing other services um start to get some level of um maybe some of that momentum and people really start to distinguish the difference between proof of work, proof of stake, you know, uh, a random chance system, uh, distributed versus deterministic system that may have other, you know, things that we will find over time may have bad behavior, um, from a centralization, just the natural, you know, gravitas that happens when you have a proof of stake system. I look at it at a longer scale, right? So we're hedging on both, right? So we have, uh, Bitcoin miners because China shutting down gave us an opportunity to be able to participate in that a lot more, uh, be able to get access to equipment, uh, at a competitive rate. So uh, including that into our farms was was a critical, uh, you know, move. But I think that, you know, Ethereum, as it starts to transition, the funny thing is we're already using some of those layer twos, right? So I, I, when we mine Ethereum, we're using Matic payouts, right? So it's because Ethereum. So even the mining industry kind of pivots to the tech side to where it leans out costs and expense, right? So, um, you know, pools have adjusted to make sure that miners could still participate. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that the fact that that occurs, but that, I mean, we've already kind of made that move for like the most profitable thing, which is Ethereum mining, moving to a layer two as a payout, right? So I think they can coexist by and large, but I just don't see, and I, I mean, I had this conversation in 2014 when like everything was moving to ASICs, you had, uh, you know, Dogecoin, Litecoin, everything that was GPUs after Bitcoin stopped doing it. It was like, there was so much interest in the GPU mining space and that interest is driven because you have this barrier to entry thing to where anybody on the planet that can get access to a GPU can participate. And I think what ends up happening is people start to get away from it. And then they realize like, wait a minute here, I want the grassroots market participation. How can I get grassroots market participation on the security side? Well, you 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 start with CPU or GPU. Um, so I think, you know, the chains that gravitate to that, that GPU side, um, you know, are, st they're just going to be there. I don't see that going away anytime soon. We will have probably a pullback in the amount of participation if Ethereum does finally move over to proof of stake. But we've seen that, right? The market, what happens is the hash rate contracts. Some people capitulate GPUs and you're still going to have a baseline of people that are going to do it. And then an equilibrium will be created on a certain power rate, which is right now is probably anywhere from four and a half cents to six cents per kilowatt that the folks that stay in the GPU mining that believe in it will will mine really close to just barely making a profit or just covering their expense and you'll have the network contract some and i don't think it goes away and you know that's not saying that anybody else doesn't come out with some other innovation that is proof of work that wants to take that the amount of potential gpus that are out there and offer up you know uh something that will attract them to start mining a particular coin i mean it's been a while since we've seen a, a different coin come out with some innovation um that attracts a lot of gpu miners over to it and then it starts getting price discovered from people that are like yeah cool i'm not gonna mine but i will buy it um you know we'll see i, I think there's a couple coins out there that are going to take the the torch as it were when ethereum moves on um i think ethereum classics your safest transfer of that hash rate because it's the least effort mind you it's like water fine in a way right what's the simplest way that i can transition from one thing to another ethereum classic is a lot like ethereum and people are going to change a few numbers they're not having to reconfigure their farms it's around the same power standpoint it just makes sense from a from the simplicity 
Now, we could have debates all day long if Ethereum Classic should hold that torch or not. Um, you know, having a, a, a few uh, 51% attacks against it and that and made a pivot and change to have check what you know checkpoint blocks uh you know with its mess its multiple uh, exponential subjective scoring uh tech that's in it um but then you also you know you have a handful of other things ergo is really pushing if flux is really moving right now with some innovation when it comes to parallel asset mining uh ravencoin just had its having hasn't it's typical after a having hasn't moved much from a price discovery standpoint but still has some possible inertia especially if it gets listed on coinbase which just updated its status from you know submit it to review um so who knows if coinbase is going to add it they're going through a review they could come back and say no right uh but you look at some of that and you look at the grassroots folks that are behind it um you know of innovating in that space and i think you still have your micro economy with it but we're, we're going long on it i mean we're actually updating the, the farm to uh the ampere a4000 5000 gpus which again gamers don't hate there are production like workstation cards they are not your gaming cards um we're, we're actually moving a lot of those through uh crypto world and our, a lot of our older stuff cleaning up and selling so yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it going away uh, ever. I, I think it's always going to have some inertia there, as it's been since the beginning.